High Peak Courses are a British government registered learning provider with the UK RLP. Hello, I'm Warren Lee. Welcome to High Peak Courses. This free introduction to the design and analysis of structural composites is suitable for student and graduate engineers who have little or no knowledge of engineering composite materials. Lecture 3. Layered Composites. Composites and structural composites are a huge subject to cover but I want to make it easy for you by presenting to you some basic essential knowledge, and I include shortcuts and tips. The topic of composites is quite diverse. Therefore, this presents an opportunity for you to choose a speciality area that meets with your career ambitions. Composites include a wide choice of reinforcing materials with different resins, i.e. matrix. There exist at least a dozen methods of manufacture, some are manual, robotic or automated or semi-automated. I started in composites in 1973 in civil engineering with a form of particulate composites, but it was at British Aerospace in 1984 with my first professional introduction to lightweight layered structural composites. I intend that this course content is clutter-free and get straight to what you need to know. It's an engineer's approach to start to the initial design and sizing of a composite component. What is a composite? For example, a galvanized steel pipe. The steel is a structural component and the zinc coating is a corrosive protection layer. These two different materials with different properties combine to form a functional composite material component. Metals such as aluminium and steel generally exhibit isotropic properties. The strength of Young's modulus on each respective metal are similar in each direction. For example, the Young's modulus of a generic aluminium will be 69,000 newtons per millimetre squared in all directions, and that of steel will be 208,000 newtons per millimetre squared. Layer structural composites. The composites that I want to introduce to you comprise of a number of layers of fibrous reinforcing materials stacked one on each other embedded in a resin matrix to form a laminate called structural composites. These fibrous composites will generally exhibit different material properties in direction 1 compared to the perpendicular direction 2. As a composite, these unidirectional fibres embedded in a resin, the Young's modulus EXM in direction 1, will be about 135,000 newtons per millimetre squared. The Young's modulus in the perpendicular direction 2 will be approximately 11,000 newtons per millimetre squared. These directional properties are the basis which enable us to tailor composite materials to directional loading situations and optimise the composite's performance with inherent weight minimisation. The carbon fibre shown in the photograph is a unidirectional fabric, with the fibre axes aligned in direction 1. The graph on the left shows the Young's modulus is greatest in fibre direction 1. That is when angle theta equals 0. This value then drops quickly with a small change in fibre angle. Therefore, the maximum fibre stiffness, that is Young's modulus, and strength are offered when the fibres are aligned in the direction of membrane applied load. The minimum Young's modulus and strength is in the direction 2, when angle theta equals 90. Many composite fabricators ask, how thick should we make this composite component to withstand the service loading? How is this thickness determined? What calculation do I need to do to enable me to determine this thickness? A particular example of this is a glass fibre front part of the train, which was manufactured in the UK by a spray-up technique. Now this technique uses short lengths of glass fibre, about three quarters of an inch long, 20 millimetres long. Neither the designers or the manufacturers knew the glass fibre composite properties of stiffness or strength. 
Although not a continuous fibre composite, there are ways to mathematically predict these properties required for designing the structural thickness. Many students ask, where do I start the process of structurally designing a composite structure? This is where we start to structurally design a composite component. The primary task is to determine the thickness of one laid down ply, a single laminate thickness, because we will eventually need to know how many layers are required to withstand the service loads. So that is one layer of fibre reinforcing material in a resin matrix. A piece of chopped strand glass fibre mat with a resin matrix. or carbon fibre fabric in a resin. We see here polyester resin. On the right hand side of the screen is one layer of prepreg carbon fibre laminate. The laminate on the left is one layer. It's a brownish coloured one of biocomposite, which consists of linen which is also known as flax, in a bioresin. This was cured in sunlight, as the bioresin is UV sensitive. This carbon fibre angle beam is composed of many layers of carbon fibre. Look closely. There are about 10 layers of carbon fibre in there. So what is the combined thickness when the fabric and the resin form a composite? How is this thickness determined? And what do I need to know to do this calculation? To determine the thickness of a laid down composite ply, we need to know the value of three properties related to the composite material. Number one, the real mass of the fabric supplied by the manufacturer. And this value is given in grams per square metre, noted by GSM. Number two, the volume fraction, noted as VF. The volume fraction is the percentage of fibre volume in the entire volume of a fibre reinforced composite material. The higher the volume fraction, the higher the mechanical properties, example, strength, of the composite will be. The volume fraction for a composite containing 60% fiber and 40% resin. The volume fraction is 60% or can be expressed as 0.6. The volume fraction is calculated from the weight of the fiber and the resin. It is a theoretical value and should be always checked by making a composite sample using the manufacturing process intended. The volume fraction value is based on a theoretical fiber packing model and is component geometry, process and fibre type dependent. Number three, fibre density. This value of the fabric will be supplied by the fibre manufacturer. So let us now examine these material properties. First of all, we look at two layers of carbon fibre, a plus 45 degree top layer of carbon fibre and a minus 45 degree bottom layer of carbon fibre. You can see here the aerial weight is given at 39 grams per square meter. That's 39 GSM. Next, we look at the volume fraction. And the volume fraction is affected by the manufacturing process. The process shown here is that of infusion moulding. With this type of process, we obtain a consistent, high quality product and a high value of volume fraction can be obtained, leading to high strength.
Now, looking at density, we have a glass fibre woven fabric here. Typical density is about 2.2 grams per cc. That will be given by the manufacturer. The carbon fibre woven cloth we see here is approximately 1.8 grams per cc. Again, provided by the manufacturer. Now I'm going to show you the effects of these three properties on the final laid down ply cured thickness. To do this, I will use a composite design analysis software program that I wrote in the mid-1990s and developed. And this software will show us the effect on the laid down ply thickness by changing the GSM, the density and the volume fraction. First, we will calculate the laid down ply thickness of the glass fibre fabric in a resin matrix. Its aerial weight was given at 298 GSM. For the volume fraction of the composite, we initially assumed that to be 0.5 for the sake of the calculation. But as previously mentioned, we will check this value by doing a test using the manufacturing process intended for use. Fibre density is given by the fibre manufacturer at 2.2 grams per cc. The calculation using CSAMS shows a result of laid down ply thickness of 0.271 millimetres. How I did this, I will now show you. Open CSAMS. Go to PTAM and enter the values 298 for the GSM, 0.5 for the volume fraction, and 2.2 grams per cc for the density. In this example, we calculate the laid down ply thickness for one layer of carbon fibre composite. Given the following values, the aerial weight equals 120 GSM, the volume fraction equals 0.6, and the fibre density is given as 1.8. We calculate the laid down ply thickness, that's the curled ply thickness, as 0.111 millimetres. You can see many layers in this carbon fibre angle bracket. Let's do a hybrid of carbon fibre and Kevlar fabric. So I'm going to see sums. Open PTAM. The aerial weight given for this material is 240. That's a combined material of carbon fibre and Kevlar. The volume fraction, we're going to assume 0.55. And the density is 1.6 grams per cc. The calculated laid down ply thickness is 0.273 millimetres. This lecture gives you valuable knowledge because it identifies where you should start your composite design, the first step, what you should calculate first. I have shown you the three major influences or properties that determine and affect the cure ply thickness, or some would say the laid down ply thickness. In the beginning of design and structural analysis of a new composite structural component, there is no need to wait for manufacture of a composite test coupon to determine the cure ply thickness. This will come later after you've decided on the laminate architecture. Indeed, at the start of the project, you may have not determined the laminate architecture preferred. This means how many layers and the orientation of these layers or plies have not yet been decided. So start by developing a mathematical model which can be refined, modified as you progress your design. In lecture four, I will look at tailoring structural composites for strength, stiffness, thickness, and weight, and of course, the influence on cost. I will show you what composite properties are needed to structurally analyze your design. I will examine a simple 
composite design technique. I will look at examples of simple composite structural analysis techniques using a box beam design and a C-channel beam. 